Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast. Thank you for checking out another brand new episode. Episode 1003 with singer-songwriter Matt Jordan. I had a lot of fun recording this one with Matt, talking about his brand new album, The Gamble, available now wherever you get your digital music at. But we uh, deep dive into some of the songs and stories and uh, everything that made this record possible, and uh, had a lot of fun getting to know a little bit more about Matt. And uh, so hope you enjoy this one. Do want to remind you, as always, Rock Paper Podcast is brought to you by Friendship Brewing Company in Wentzville, Missouri, serving up all your craft beer needs. Over 25 rotating taps out there and uh, all kinds of delicious food, burgers and nachos and flatbread pizzas and all kinds of tasty things. And uh, of course, you can get some great live music on the weekends out there and uh, you can still uh, catch Mickey Scott there on Saturday, October 29th. That's also their Halloween party. So come on out and celebrate Halloween with them at Friendship Brewing Company. Uh, going into November, November 4th, Friday night, Jeff Waltchauser. And Saturday, November 5th, Saturday night with Denver Wade Trent out there. You can find their full listing of beer menu, food menu, and concert calendar at friendshipbrewingcompany.com. And again, come out there and visit them in Wentzville, Missouri, and find everything else on Facebook and Instagram. Also, big thank you to my friends at Roughneck Beard Company and American Rambler for their continued support of this show. It's officially beard season. The weather is cooling off and it's prime time for growth. Whether you are keeping it going or growing it out for the first time, Roughneck Beard Company products make it better. Eliminate the itch and set the stage for a faster, fuller growth with Roughneck's full line of beard oils, balms, washes, and nutrient sprays. Find it all at roughneckbeardcompany.com and where you can shop 24-7 or visit them in the Maplewood area on Manchester, here if in the St. Louis area. Again, find it all roughneckbeardcompany.com for all your beard and mustache needs, your favorite beard oils, balms, junk powder, soaps, combs, whatever you might need. And uh, be sure to use my code RPP15 for an exclusive 15% off your purchase. Again, uh, you can fi- use that at roughneckbeardcompany.com Also, uh, if you need anything else from me, you can hit me up on the socials. Email me at rockpaperpodcast at gmail.com Visit the website, rockpaperpodcast.com You can find uh, my merch links there. If you want to support this show that way, uh, I have some t-shirts and hats and stuff up there. And uh, other than that, I would just love to hear from you. Uh, Thank you. Again, for all the continued support, I appreciate it. And with all that out of the way, sit back, relax, and enjoy a brand new episode with Matt Jordan. Um, the podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio. It's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> that's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. This is Matt Jordan, and you're listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. This is beat paper, paper covers rock. Rock beats is the Shane covers nonstop, never know what. New kind of guests that he's got coming at you. Live and direct on the spot could be rock, folk, country, or hip-hop, jazz. All kind of folks that he has could be an artist or a comedian to make you laugh on the Rock Paper Podcast. Double-decker fudge round roll. Shane coming at you live and direct from ground zero. He's your hero. He's your bestie. Rock paper podcast with Shane Presley. Rock paper podcast. Hey everybody, Shane Presley here. Rock paper podcast coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri. Hanging out today with Matt Jordan. 
welcome to the show, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. This is uh, very cool. I'm uh, glad to be here. We uh, recording today at your home and your your little home studio, and uh, this is cool, man. I'm glad uh, we finally linked up. We became friendly online a little while back, yeah. and uh, I, I mean, I I've been meaning to do this for a while, but it seemed like it all uh, worked out time wise. Now we got a brand new album to talk about. And, yeah, we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, so uh, I feel like this is a good timing for all this to sit down and uh, catch up and get to meet each other officially. Um, but uh, I don't I don't really know a, t- a whole lot about Matt Jordan, so I think that's what's fun about doing this show is it gives me an opportunity to sit down and get it right from the source mm-hmm. and. Uh, so I know, uh, we're, uh, I guess you, you grew up the, in this area, right? Like I in, did. Yeah. I grew up in Eureka. Yeah. Um, so I was, I grew up in Eureka, moved out to town and country when I was like 14. Um, and then was in St. Louis area till college. Yeah. Uh, so what's, uh, let's, let's start there, man. I guess like, um, you, I read a little bit that you're, I guess you had quite a bit of family that plays also or something yeah so i grew up in in a pretty musical home my dad um he plays guitar and and he wrote songs when my prize possessions is over there on my desk it's his old songwriting notebook from when he was in college so he wrote and uh never did it you know professionally but uh that was kind of how he listened to music and so i really grew up on his music and it was always him you know when he plays his songs, Bruce Springsteen, the Eagles, Bob Seger, Cat Stevens, all those guys, he's always calling out the songwriting, not the guitar solos or the guitar riffs or whatever. Right. It was always listen to this lyric or this line. And so I really grew up listening to music from like a lyrical standpoint. And then both my siblings are musical. My mom's a good singer. Um, and she had us listening to, you know, 90s country and, and pop kind of stuff growing up. So yeah, a lot of music in my house as a kid. Yeah, that... um definitely uh <clears throat> all all you mentioned and we have a bunch of them uh, framed on the wall here yeah. which is cool to see yeah uh that i mean obviously a soundtrack to my youth also i mean i grew up on a lot of that stuff with my mm-hmm. parents also my um you know my parents we would i remember uh, you know going on different family vacations or whatever we'd always have the boom box uh with uh some of cd you know book of cds and uh yep playing a bunch of those and um and i yeah but yeah definitely uh and then dad gave me a bunch of his records uh all of his uh vinyl collection and things that he had he didn't have a, a ton because he actually like lost a lot of stuff in a in a house fire when oh when, uh, when they were young um but uh so he was able to have, he still had some of the collection and but um but yeah anyway i just uh definitely have a lot of vivid memories of um, speaking of Seeger, he, we had a piano at the house yeah. and, uh, who knows when it was ever tuned or anything. And, uh, <laughs> but dad, uh, would occasionally, uh, like all he ever played on it was a, yep. and, uh, <laughs> that was, that was about all we, he knew on piano. <laughs> That's great. That's so, a good, great song. Yeah. Good song to know. Yep. So, uh, well, we, he did play, uh, some guitar, um, and harmonica and things. So, but I mean, I, I never picked it up. But but, yeah. but like yourself, uh, songwriting has always been one for me. It's something like, um, I don't know. I don't know if I really noticed it as a kid, but definitely like as I got older and, and really started deep diving in more into music myself. Uh, I mean, I was always reading liner notes, mm-hmm. uh, especially in country music, uh, you know, seeing all these guys that some of my, you know, there was the same couple of guys that kept writing um, you know, you start picking up on it yeah. that, you know, your Dallas Davidson and Chris yep. Stapleton and all these guys were writing oh, yeah. hit after hit for all these guys. And before, you know, Stapleton ever made it as a, you know, the big name for himself and stuff as a performer. Yeah. Um, you know, things like that. So I was like, I just kept uh, reading notes, liner yeah. notes and seeing that these guys were writing all these great songs. Yeah. It's interesting. Like I, I think growing up, I just assumed that everyone wrote their own songs. And a lot of the guys I was listening to growing up did, you know, right. like Springsteen wrote and does write all his stuff and Petty wrote his stuff and Seeger wrote a lot of his stuff and Don Henley and Glenn Fry wrote the Eagles stuff. But 
uh, I didn't even realize songwriting was like a, an industry mm-hmm. until later in life. And same thing, I kind of got into the more modern country music and was seeing Ashley Gorley, Dallas Davidson, Shane McNally, you mm-hmm. know, like all those guys writing everything. I was like, man, this is a, this is a whole world I didn't even know about, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. I, th- I feel like, uh, especially in modern country and, and in pop music, I think we see it most now. Like, I mean, obviously like Taylor Swift writes her stuff, right. you know, there's, a, right. there's a bunch of them, but there's also people that are just the voice of these yeah. songs. And, and yeah. uh, so, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I think that, um, I think sometimes you get people who are like, Oh, you should write your own songs. And I, I do write my own songs, but like George Strait doesn't write much of his stuff. Tim no. McGraw doesn't write much. Keith yeah. Urban cuts outside songs <clears throat> and like, they're artistically so good at what they do. It's okay. Yeah. You know, like it's still their song, even though they're not the ones writing it. And sure. I think it's part of knowing their brand is like, you know, they, they know the guys who can really, uh, cater to their voice and their brand. And, mm-hmm. um, it's a good business move, you know? Yeah. I think it keeps them on the road too. Like yeah. it's, uh, I mean, you look at, um, you know, like a Blake Shelton, like he's putting out a record every year mm-hmm. you know, he goes, he picks the 10 best songs or yeah. whatever. He does a season of the two of the voice. Yeah. Uh, and then he tours and it's like, and he just rents and repeat and he's yeah. just been working that for right. the last several years. And yeah. it's like, but, uh, you know, you don't, you can't, you can't write or, well, I mean, some people can, but I'm just like, if, if you're doing all that, you don't have really have a time to write yeah. 10, 12 great songs, great to, songs right. know, to put on a record. So it's like, it, you need to kind of yeah. shop around sometimes. And yeah. And I appreciate it. It supports the songwriting community <laughs> sure. too. You know I mean? To get a Blake Shelton cut. Yeah. I think it's, there, there's something selfless about it that he's saying, I'll cut outside songs. I don't have to put my name on everything. And that serves the songwriting community, yeah. you know, which is, is the backbone of the industry yeah you know i remember hearing an interview with stapleton about a very similar kind of kind of thing he's like didn't realize that songwriting was a thing yeah and then he's like and then learned about he's like oh i guess i'll do that and (laughs) and then turns out he's like one of the best to ever do it he he got pretty good at it (laughs) yeah like so i just uh just how you know how relaxed he is about it all like he's just yeah. you know, he's just super chill about everything yeah. he does but but i just uh, i thought that was funny hearing that from him yeah yeah he's a unique kind of talent that way yeah yeah man one uh gifted writer but uh i mean just uh an incredible performer it's mm-hmm. cool to see him really like you know blow up in front yeah. of for the last several years now but uh you know i remember that night that he <clears throat> what was uh cmas or whatever with justin timberlake and yeah like that was like that was it man that was like the moment like yep. you know i got in front of the world and on a big stage like that and people were like who's this guy you know yeah. and then yeah, people that were in the know obviously already you know knew him for a long time but the general public yeah took attention and right of course uh tennessee whiskey blew up in a huge song and yeah it was interesting i was living in nashville when stapleton kind of blew up and I had seen his name on, you know, Music Row. They put, when you get a number one song, they put a banner outside the publishing company, and uh, his name was always on Music Row because he mm-hmm. had so many hits as a writer. And then he re- started releasing stuff as an artist. I was like, I didn't even realize this guy sang, yeah. much less like this. <laughs> you know, uh, he's kind of a jack of all trades. Yeah, I should have shared the story uh, before, but I got to see him in. Um a little club here in town, uh, no longer open now, but, uh, the firebird. Oh yeah. And with like, I think it kept out like 400 people. That's and, crazy. uh, so I got to see him like, right as like he was on tour for traveler. Um, yeah, I should have been good. Yeah. It was, I mean, <laughs> like, I, like, I remember him, um, uh, I remember like, uh, sometimes I cry, like he played and I'm just yeah. like, dude, I like chills. I'm like, this is, this is all floors me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's like, it's already great on the recording and everything, but then like, you know, seeing it live from 15 feet away and stuff with him and Morgan. And like, I'm just like, this is awesome. Yeah. And I'm like, and I'm like, but that night, of course I go in and I'm like, I'm, this is never going to happen again. I mean, right. like we're, right. We're watching this guy take a rocket to the top, and right. like, and yeah. you know, of course, now he's at he the, the amphitheaters and yeah. everything else. So, yeah. But I mean, that traveler record's so good, and it's so good. And then he just kept it, kept the momentum going. But. Yeah, yeah, it's it's special stuff, man. But there's a we speaking to him also. Like, I, I think it's really cool because I also I just saw <clears throat> I went out to see Marcus King the other night. Yeah, at uh, the pageant. 
and a girl, uh, Ashlyn Craft, opened the show. Yep. And she was really good too. I liked uh, her. I like, I've heard some of her recordings and then, but she did like a solo acoustic thing opening the show and, and she covered Stapleton's, uh, you should probably leave. Oh yeah. And which I, I think is like one of, one of my favorites from him. Um, but what's, what's uh, my connection with that song is kind of, it's kind of weird because like, it just kind of comes full circle that the fact that like now somebody else is covering that song, but it was one I like, I remember you know, connecting to the songwriting and the and stuff like this is a great song. I was just a YouTube video like years ago, like seven, eight years ago. I've been watching. I know what video you're talking about. Yeah, it's like him on like a side stage at like some country yep. festival thing, and and uh, I remember watching this and I like I don't know how I mean how I found it, but I'm like, man, I really like this song, and I kept waiting for, a, you know, I probably deep dove in the internet after you know Traveler and stuff, but like. And found that song and I'm like, why is this not on a record, man? This song's so good. And like and and then finally he cut it on a record uh years and later. But I have the exact same story about that. I, I guarantee you I know which video it is because I found that on YouTube kind of when I found out he was doing the artist thing. And I listened to that song. I was like, This is his best song. And I was like, he has to record this eventually. Right. And it took a long time. But I knew every word the time when that song came out on the record, I knew every word because of that YouTube video. Yeah. It's so good. It's yeah. so compelling. I'm so glad he finally cut it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's just a you know, I don't know. I don't know what the secret is why it makes it any better than anything else. But I do I agree. I think it's a great song, but it's just something simple. It's a nice mm-hmm. little groove to it and like Yeah. And I feel like we all kind of it's relatable you know yeah. we've all kind of been there maybe yeah. certain nights i think so. that's i think that's part of what makes stapleton so great it's like obviously his writing and his voice are spectacular but there's like he kind of came out coming out of the bro country era i guess you'd say yeah when everything was drum beats and produced heavily and he's his production's so simple and live that he's got a simple band i've seen him a couple times and Mm-hmm. he does most of his guitar work and he's a good yeah. guitarist but he's not keith urban ripping he's just playing the parts tasteful little parts here and there and it's just the simplicity of it the rawness of it i think just makes it um it was a really really fresh sound yeah when it came out and there are people chasing it now but sure. no one will ever do it quite like him you know i saw over him over the summer at the amphitheater with and uh he had dave cobb on guitar with yep. him so that was cool yeah like, getting to didn't see him yeah play. I saw uh, Stapleton open <laughs> for Petty at Wrigley Field on Petty's last tour, Man, what which was crazy. Wow, it was the best show I've ever there seen. You go. But Dave Cobb was with him at that one. I don't think yeah. I don't think Dave was on tour with him, but I think they brought him in to like, hey, let's play at Wrigley yeah. <laughs> for Petty. You know, it was pretty cool. Nice man. Yeah, yeah. that's a uh, <coughs> that's definitely one for the memory book. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was Petty's my favorite of all time. I think. And so I I got tickets to see him here in St. Louis, and then Chicago was the next closest date that I was able to make. I was like, I don't know how long this guy's going to be going. I'm going to grab him because he hadn't toured in a little bit. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to get tickets for a couple of shows. And so the, I saw him here first, and then a couple months later went to Chicago, and obviously he passed right after that tour. So I'm really grateful I got to do that. But yeah, he and Stapleton together was pretty special. Yeah, I got to. I didn't. Uh, I, I bummed. I missed the the one here in St. Louis, but. Uh, <clears throat> I saw him, um, you know, probably whatever, fifteen years ago or something like that. I'd, so I did get to see that's good. Petty live yeah. and uh, Black Crows opened for him that, oh, that's cool. that summer. That's, cool. uh, that's a good show. Yeah, River Port down there. So yeah, it was fun. I'm glad I, you know, at least I had that memory, that opportunity to see him. But uh, yeah, again, I'm with you, man. He's one of the all time yeah, but greats. And when people, when guys, that was such a good era of music. You know, like I said, that's the stuff that I grew up on. So, like, those are my those are my people. And when they go on tour now, I'm like, I'm going to try to figure out a way to get a ticket. Because you just don't know how long sure. people have left, you know. Yeah. Well, I've been trying to live by that for, for a long time. Like, uh, um, you know, I mean, you just never know anybody, obviously. Uh, but it always kind of, for me, uh, back in high school, like, it really started to kind of, taking hold uh and i had a we had this old uh f- he was a football coach and then by the time i got there he was our health teacher and our, our track coach but uh he passed our our uh my sophomore year mm-hmm. and um you know it was, 
Yeah. He always said, like, live this five like your last five. It was always about living mm-hmm. in the moment. And, yeah. uh, you know, and then <clears throat> he preached that for a long time. And then, you know, he passed and drove the message home even more. Like, it resonated yeah. that, like, what he was saying. And, um, uh, but I remember he would always tell us, like, if somebody offers you like cardinal tickets or whatever, like don't worry about the homework, just go, you know, have fun and at it, the yeah. game and you can make up the homework later and that, yeah. whatever. And it's a good way to live. Yeah. So I thought that was, uh, you know, I always appreciated that about him. And then, um, but yeah, he, he, uh, had a heart attack one weekend and never came back. And, Man. uh, so, uh, it kind of makes you, you know, put it in perspective how fragile life is sometimes. And, you know, there's some of these people that you, uh, you think are always going to be there, you know, sometimes they're not. So it's, uh, it stinks, uh, when you lose some of those and, uh, especially some of the greats that we, we celebrate, but I've been, um, I mean, I got to see like, uh, Mitch Hedberg at the pageant one time. Uh, and he was a young guy, you know, still, yeah. then and still and like, and he, and he passed shortly after that. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know, I'm thankful that I got to have that moment. And, <coughs> yeah. um, but, yeah, I think. You know, it's it's a good way to live. I mean, obviously, you can't afford to go see every every legend, right? Yeah, like, I sure. wish I could, but if yeah. I could, yeah, but I just, it, the 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 biggest ones for me, you know, if I can if I can grab a ticket to see them, even if it's a nosebleed seat, yeah. I'm gonna try to go. You know, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Just being in the same room is uh, yeah. is is cool. So yeah, I just have the experience. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. We've been talking a lot about everybody else's music. Uh, let's talk about some of your more your music. Yeah. Uh, this. Uh, so this Friday, uh, we have your this your debut it's album. A, it's the first full length. Full album, length, yeah. yeah. You yeah. have the EP out there, but this be yep. your full first full length uh, album. Yep. Uh, the gamble. Yep. Uh, available everywhere digitally and uh, and everything. So we got the pre save link up there now and mm-hmm. and all that. But uh, I thought it'd be fun to kind of deep dive through this record and do it and talk about it some. And uh, I feel like we should probably start with. Uh, track one i feel yeah. like that's a good place to, to start and uh this song called night on fire mm-hmm. this uh for me man this was one that you know obviously track one but it really grabs you right at the beginning of the album and i feel like kind of sets the tone mm-hmm. uh what you're getting into and just like it just uh it feels good man it just it felt like uh you know just kind of reminiscent of some some of those greats that we talked about mm-hmm. petty and springsteen and stuff yeah. kind of in kind of something uh similar but you know obviously your own take on it but just yeah. like it just feels like it's comfortable like that like it feels good like like yeah. you know like you're listening to some uh, one of those greats like that and uh thank you and uh whether well, it was uh lines uh that got me uh you say uh i'm a i'm a, like a matchbox down to my last mm-hmm. strike yeah and uh uh, what's like, um, once I get going, I'll do the, or, or, yeah, it's, or, or uh, once I get, I'm a matchbox with yeah. only one strike left. Yeah. If you can get me started, I can do the rest. Yeah. 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 Man. I just, so I felt, uh, I, you know, that resonated with me. It just something like, I feel like, uh, is a, is a good, uh, analogy. I mean, sometimes it feels like that. Like when yeah. you're, you know, you're, you're struggling, you just need that one break and, yeah. and stuff. So, yeah. Desperate and dying My world's cold and dark I'm longing for a feeling A spark to my heart Baby, you hold the lighter To set this boy ablaze Matchbox with 
only one strike left If you can get me started Honey, I can do the rest Yeah, that song kind of came about um, my co-writer who has eight cuts of 11 on this album. I wrote most of the album with him. He uh, had like this freak accident. He hit his head last fall and got a traumatic brain injury. Oh, wow. And he's been, you know, dealing with that since. It's been a year now about. And um, he, we were writing together all the time and, and still are and everything. But um, he just kind of, he moved home. And I was dealing with this brain injury, and he texted me kind of the idea for that song one night, and you know, sent me the first couple lines. I'm desperate and dying. My world is cold and dark. I'm longing for a feeling, a spark to my heart, and we just kind of were off to the races on it. And it was like what he had sent me was just so um, it grabbed me, and I was like, "This is a special song, man. We gotta, we gotta chase this thing." Yeah, and, um, yeah. It's kind of it, I appreciate you saying it kind of sets the tone for the album because that's that's kind of the goal, and I think that um, it's kind of an angsty song. And I think he and I both feel that sometimes, kind of this restlessness of like, I've got something here. I just need, I need something to take, you know, mm-hmm. I need, I need a break or whatever. Um, and so that's kind of where that second verse came from that I'm a matchbox, the only one strike left. If you can get me started, I can do the rest. It's right. kind of how it feels sometimes. You know? I mean, I, I think that's uh, so, uh, something that can be applied to about <clears throat> anything in life. But I mean, like you think about, you know, maybe, you know, looking at your, your own career and stuff. Mm-hmm. like sometimes people only need like that one hit to get, yeah. get things, get the momentum going or yeah. whatever, or, you know, that, uh, one big show. And, yeah. and I feel like some, you think like, uh, it's just something like that. Like, you know, there's always like those, <coughs> those moments in life where we're like, we just need that one win you yeah know? and uh yeah and i feel like that's how that's how i took it so. yeah yeah and that's and I, i'm glad that it's i think it is a universal enough concept that you don't have to be in my shoes you don't have to be in Jarrett's shoes right to know what that line means you know it can mean something different to everybody i think we all kind of felt that way yeah. it's just like there's just one more thing I'm, i need to get this thing going you know whether yeah. that's a career or whatever a relationship whatever sure. it may be, you know yeah man but yeah uh uh, this was uh, a lot of fun and uh like i said uh gonna be available everywhere mm-hmm. um coming up friday yep and uh are you doing any uh physicals with it or are you do or is i do have some cds uh no vinyls i was gonna do vinyls but there's a huge back order on vinyls yeah. right now and they're super expensive apparently taylor swift and adele are uh buying them all, buying them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're probably gonna sell a few more than me so <laughs> uh, i did get some cds though and uh i'll sell CDs at shows. I might put them up on my website, uh, but there's three bonus tracks on the CD version. All right, that will not be on the digital version. So come to the show and get a CD. Very cool. Yeah, that's a nice little yeah. incentive. Yeah, and uh, we do have a couple of uh, 
big shows coming up. A couple of good opportunities come out and see Matt live and uh, <clears throat> celebrate this brand new record. And uh, that'll be November 4th in Marion, Illinois at the Pavilion, mm -hmm. you said. And that night you'll be uh, sharing the stage with Noah Thompson and Hunter Girl from mm -hmm. American Idol. Yeah. Which would be cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I uh, we we connected with the promoter in Marion, who's who's brought us down there a couple times to play shows, and we opened for Parmalee and Lanco down there this spring, I guess it was, and he's been real good to us, and it's a good crowd. It's uh, Marion's a cool little town, and it's kind of cool because Marion and Carbondale and Cape Girardeau are all kind of like right there, and so you're kind of pulling from a couple different markets, and it's they've been really good to us. Yeah, It'll be a fun show. Yeah. And, um, and then of course, uh, the big one here locally, mm -hmm. uh, for St. Louis fans, uh, would be, uh, uh, on November 12th, your album release party mm -hmm. at Kirkwood Performing Arts Center. And, uh, you're bringing along my dude, Tyler Dale, mm -hmm. uh, a good buddy of mine Yeah, and, uh, Michael B. Witt. Yep. Yeah. They're great. That's, uh, I'm excited about that. We've never really done anything like that before. Like hosting our own show, really. Um, you know, we're we're kind of at a place right now where the the best thing for us to be doing are opening spots and fairs and festivals and that kind of thing. So we don't do a lot of headlining stuff. Um, but Kirkwood Performing Arts Center, it's a beautiful theater. Uh, I think it sits five hundred thirty people. So um, trying to pack it out as much as we can. Uh, we sold out of VIP tickets. We did a hundred VIP tickets for like the pre show meet and greet thing. Uh, and those sold out in two, two or three weeks, which is pretty cool. But yeah, Tyler and, and Michael, they're, they're both great St. Louis artists. I'm really looking forward to having them kick the night off for us. It's going to be a really fun night. Yeah, man. You, uh, is this more, um, you got like a full band doing the yep. whole, doing like most of the record with you? And yeah, full band. Uh, and we're actually, my full band is usually me, two electric guitarists, a drummer and a bass player. And we have a, a keyboard player sitting in for this one, which is it's been really fun to rehearse with him. You yeah. Know, it's, uh, we got to run a little bit lean at most shows, you know, cause you just, you got to pay people. <laughs> uh, so we don't always have a keyboard player with us, but I'm, I'm looking forward to having one up there. It adds a lot to the sound. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely a lot of keys on the record. Yeah. Uh, right. So make, I would, yeah. Hope bring that full sound out. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of the, you know, you live, we're usually trying to navigate that without keys. It's like, there are a lot of songs. My producer's uh, a really great keyboard piano player and, he adds a lot of that stuff, and he's real influenced by the same guys I am. And if you listen to Springsteen and that stuff, there's a lot of organs and pianos and stuff, and so it works really well on the records. Um, but live, that's kind of the, the instrument that hasn't always been with us, so we kind of pull off different versions with guitars and whatnot to, mm -hmm. to replace the keys. But it'll be fun to have a keyboard player on this show. Yeah, definitely. And hopefully more shows in the future. So, <laughs> so we do have a couple tickets left for that yep for that night so yeah, uh, grab them if you want to be in there uh you got to get them now so yep. yeah for sure for the gone and uh let's talk about uh your current single uh this one's uh been taken off uh we get the um, got a brand new video for it and everything else but uh we're talking about wrangler mm -hmm. and uh like i said this one's already out there available yep. everywhere so and check out the video on your yeah youtube and facebook and stuff so yeah yeah that one is uh it was the last single i did a handful of singles before the album that was the the last one before the album release and uh it's a it's a fun song it was um it was an idea i tried to write for a long time like i my first car was a 2007 jeep wrangler uh a couple years used when i got it and uh man it was just a symbol of like innocence and youth to me you know mm -hmm. and like i would take the doors off and the top off and the windows out and i drove my friends everywhere because i was the guy with the jeep wrangler you know yeah. and it was it was just so much fun and um i had it for a long time i had it all through high school and college and into my early adult life and the plan was to keep it forever um you know i, I wanted to, i knew it couldn't always be a daily driver like we got kids now and stuff and um, that wasn't realistic to be loading car seats into a two door Wrangler, you know, but I intended to keep it forever. And, um, I ended up getting hit by a semi head on and totaled the Jeep. Oh, I walked man. away with just a scratch on my knuckle, which is, um, pretty miraculous. But unfortunately the Jeep was totaled and, uh, I didn't get to keep it forever. So I've always wanted to write a song about it. Um, and, and the thing is like, 
for me, it was a Jeep Wrangler, but I think everyone has something that they hold on to from a different time in their lives to kind of anchor them in their past, yeah. you know, and remind them of who they are and where they come from and what makes them who they are. And that's what the Jeep was for me. And for other people that might be, you know, a, a songwriting book from your dad, you know, or uh, your grandpa's Bible or a pair of your mom's earrings or something, you know, like whatever it is. But that idea was just compelling to me using the Wrangler as kind of a metaphor for that. And so I had tried to, I took a, a, a number of stabs at it on my own and it just never was doing what I wanted it to do. So I ended up taking it to my co-writer Colton Venner out of Nashville uh, who's just a really great storyteller writer. Um, and he he got the idea and he got where I was wanting to go with it and helped me pull it together. Um, and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I think it, it it's what I wanted it to be and I'm glad I waited to, to get golden on it, you know. Just uh, what this week, I guess. Uh, you, you even had a Jeep even shared the video, yeah. uh, a little snippet of the video yeah. on socials and stuff. Yeah, so we went out and shot a. I went out to Denver area uh, this summer and shot a, a music video for Wrangler, which was great. I mean, I love I love the mountains, and my videographer uh, used to be St. Louis based, and he's out there now. So I was like, hey man, I want to come out and do a video, and 
it was perfect for that song as we were driving through the mountains and had all that mountain footage and it looked like a Jeep commercial, you know, and uh, yeah, ended up getting Jeep to, to post a little clip of it on their Instagram and TikTok, which was pretty cool. Yeah, man. Pretty exciting. Very cool. I thought uh, that was, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure as you probably as you start writing this song, you yeah, that's maybe something, a, a, a dream, but it's like, you know, it's just really cool. Like you never, those little moments like that, you like never would imagine like that. Yeah getting a shout out from jeep and stuff yeah. you know like yeah i i didn't you know i didn't know uh i didn't think about that when i was writing the song right and then we did the video and i was like this kind of looks like a jeep commercial yeah and uh yeah my publicist was able to to make a connection there and, yeah. and get it in front of them and they were all excited about it and sure. it's been really cool to have it on their page gotten a good response from it and yeah it's a, it's a cool kind of milestone to, to have gotten you know yeah man well, yeah i'm and I don't know, I, I'm with you though, like, uh, as far as like those, uh, in uh, those moments like that, those that keep you, uh, for me, it's always, uh, music's always kind of been that, like, uh, uh, it's like, uh, able to time travel, you mm-hmm. know, a sense like, yeah. I mean, I can go, if I hear some certain songs, they'll take me right back to 16 in mm-hmm. my, in my first car and stuff. Yeah. And, and cruising with my buddies and just yeah. like you're saying like those memories and stuff of in the jeep and things so um i don't know music's weird about the way that does that like you know just like it yeah. takes you right back there like nothing nothing ever happened and oh yeah there's so many songs from high school or college that i'll, I'll listen to today and feel like I'm, I'm a kid again yeah you know and and it was i guess i guess that song was kind of an attempt to capture that feeling sure. of like you know there was a time when I was uh, free and innocent and uh, yeah. not so jaded by the world, I guess, <laughs> you know, and that was kind of the goal of that song was to yeah. capture that feeling. Well, you, uh, you even say, uh, um, first, what, first love CD, burnt yeah. mix CD. And yeah. Stuck, stuck in the dash as a first love burnt CD. Yeah. yeah. What's up? What's on that CD? You think, uh, what would you, Oh think? man, from my, my high school days, it would have been, uh, it would have been a lot of the stuff we talked about. Yeah. Uh, it would have been some Switchfoot in there. Yeah. Uh, man, probably some Nelly. <laughs> it would yeah. have been quite a blend of music back right. in high school for me. I uh, I just saw Switchfoot over the summer with uh, Collective Soul. That was, oh, that yeah? Was, that was a good night out. They're great, man. Yeah. John Foreman's one of the best front men in the game. But, I mean, that was like, I, met, I knew like some of the, you know, Meant to Live and whatever. Yeah. I knew some of the radio yeah, hits. Right. But as far as like, you know, I never really deep dive into their catalog but i yeah. they i mean they rock man it was like a lot yeah. more like i always kind of put kind of put them in like a, a little more of a, like a poppy uh radio friendly thing but like there was a lot more you know true true rock and roll and some yeah. of that you know they, they threw down so i was like yeah. i was impressed by their set and had a lot of fun with it and yeah they out, outside of their like hits they kind of have that reputation of being like the christian rock guys which they they are yeah. um but they're they're good though. Yeah. They're a legitimate rock band. Yeah. And they put on a great show. Yeah. It was fun. And then the Cl- Collective Soul always delivers those guys. I haven't are, I haven't seen them. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. They're I mean, they've been doing it forever. But <clears throat> great, great band. The only thing with that particular show is like that I didn't really care for is uh I think I'm pretty sure it was uh Ron. I think they ended their night with. Maybe. I think I'm pretty sure it was Run. It was like a softer one. Yeah. And they were kind of, um, and they kind of played it out on acoustic and it was like kind of like let it, let it loop out for the last couple <laughs> couple of, uh, you know, measures and stuff. And then like, and they walked off stage and I was like, I don't know. I was kind of confused by it all. Like, yeah. I, I, like I always like ending a night on a big, yeah. big one, big yeah. sing along or sure. whatever, like some, a big moment. Yeah. And this one kind of just felt like, you know, like they eased us down to like, you know, like yeah. kind of thing. It's like, all right. Yeah. I don't know. I just, uh, wasn't bad. I mean, it was just my, my preference. I always just like, you know, I want to go home and like, that was amazing. Yeah. You right. Know, it's like, so. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree with that. I think, I think upbeat closers are better. Yeah. I've seen it done well with, with slow kind of ballads as a closer. Yeah. Um, but I think, I don't know. I think the beauty of like live music is like, we're all kind of in this together and it's kind of like a celebration of, sure. of us, you know, uniting over something and, and you feel that more when you do a up, upbeat kind of, uh, rock song, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, well mentioning, uh, uh, Wrangler also, uh, got me thinking about, uh, <laughs> 
you know, you got the video and uh, I got the shout out from him and all that. Uh, my buddy, uh, well, I, I say, but uh, I don't really, I never met him except for like, I mean, like friendly wise, I met him as a fan. Uh, but Will Hogue, uh, mm -hmm. one of my favorite songwriters. Uh, Great. Yeah. I, mean, I, I catch him every time he's in town and yeah. like he's just, I'm the super fan and celebrate yeah. his whole catalog. And, yeah. uh, but I've uh, never actually like got to, you know, be buddies with him like yeah I, but i uh he uh he wrote uh uh strong yeah and i got picked up by chevy yes and he got like they even used it in their commercials and mm -hmm. stuff and and he was he told a story when i saw him live one time about uh you know how this all kind of came about and like how he's like he said he got a call from them and they were like let me ask you, uh, Mr. Hogue, what do you, what do you, uh, kind of vehicle do you drive? And he's like, well, I have a Prius. And he's like, well, I'm going to have a Chevy real soon or something. <laughs> you know, like, so I just, yeah. uh, it just kind of made me laugh. Like it just, uh, you know, but, uh, yeah, I, I man, he's one of the best for sure. Like, I, oh, he's big, great. Yeah. Yeah. He's his solo. I think a lot of people know him more as a writer, uh, for other people. Cause he has, you know, um, Eli Young cuts and, couple couple big country cuts but man his solo stuff is oh yeah fantastic yeah 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 he uh just released a brand new record uh wings on my shoes and i haven't it. heard it yet uh, i'll have to go dive into it do it man i will it's, it's one of I, I love all the stuff that i've heard from him i'll have to check that out yeah some of his best work but yeah like i say now i mean <laughs> he uh wrote even if it breaks your heart that mm -hmm. eli young band cut and yep. you know that was kind of a big break for him in nashville and like getting yeah. getting um you know more of a national exposure yeah and stuff but yeah he's yeah that song's so great yeah yeah i remember that you know obviously hearing it long before eli ban eli young band cut it and and always uh spoke to me i mean it was just like yeah. you know again being a fan of music like it's exactly that story man just like yeah. you know uh, old enough to get there but too young to get inside yeah. and stuff, you know like yeah. he, and uh it, uh but i guess i get i guess ultimately it, it did what it was going to do i think eric pasley is also a co-write mm -hmm. on that and he writes like, some songs yeah man. oh yeah he's great but i guess it you know they felt it did what it was going to do with them and so it made sense to get somebody yeah. else to get it to the world yeah. but i can't imagine like he said i remember uh also hearing seeing will alive one time he was telling i guess he like got to they were eli young band was on tour opening for Kenny Chesney or something like that. Yeah. And they invited Will to come out and do some co-writing, you know, again. And uh, he's saying something about, like, of course, like, you know, his shows and small clubs and stuff, and now he's playing. Yeah. They invite him to come out and play guitar. Right. And he's playing in front of Kenny's crowd of, yeah. like, 40 50 thousand right, people and right. stuff you know and he's like man this uh, this is cool like, yeah yeah and wouldn't he, argue with that gig and then of course like you know they play even if it breaks your heart and he's like talking about what that meant what that was like you know forty thousand people singing your song back yeah. to you and stuff like that's got to be pretty wild feeling it's a dream, man. man yeah yeah it'll be i don't know if i can handle it <laughs> yeah uh well yeah we'll, we'll get you there though we'll get we'll get people singing along the wrangler like that That'd be cool, man. Yeah, but yeah, that, I mean, I I can't imagine that'd just be be a trip. It would be a trip. Yeah, it'd be pretty pretty wild. Yeah, someday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so you uh you mentioned uh some of your co writes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Is this uh all recorded in Nashville? Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I work with a, a producer in Nashville, and you know, St. Louis has a lot of great producers, and someday I'll. I'll record with one of them, but I've just, I've had this producer in Nashville, Sal Oliveria, that I've worked with for, oh, we must have met nine or 10 years ago now. Um, and we just click, man. And, and to me, that's such a, I think the artist producer relationship is so important. Um, not just from a standpoint of you need a producer that's good at what they do. That's, that's obvious. Right. But, um, from a personality standpoint and, a um, how we see the world standpoint, a, philo a philosophical standpoint an inspiration standpoint, Sal and I just kind of match up on everything. And he's from New Jersey. He's a little older than me, but he's from New Jersey. So he's a huge Springsteen guy, you know? So when I bring bring him a song and say, I want this to feel like darkness on the edge of town or border or whatever, he, he knows how to do that 
inspiration in Matt Jordan's voice, you know? Right. And, and so, you know, someday I would, I would love to work with a producer in St. Louis cause there's, there's a lot of talented folks here, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's been really important to me to have somebody who gets me the way that Sal does. Yeah, uh, and it feels a little bit fragile to try. Okay. It feels like a, a, a risky experiment, I guess, to try somebody new. So I don't know. I might just work with him until it stops working. Well, yeah. You know? right. if, it's not, if it's not broke, why fix it, right? Yeah, that's kind of kind of how I feel about right. it. Yeah, you guys are hitting uh, hitting a stride, obviously, with this record. Yeah. Sounding really good. Yeah, thank you. He's been he's – been, uh, he, you know, he started out as just, just my producer and uh, just somebody I knew. And, and over the last, you know, nine, eight or nine years of working with him, he's become really a friend and uh, a mentor in a lot of ways. Um, he's a little older than me. He has kids a little older than mine. So I'll talk to him about parenting stuff. And, uh, right. you know, when I had my first meeting with a publisher in Nashville, I called him and was like, hey, what do I need to know going into this? What do I need to, what questions do I need to ask? All that kind of stuff. And, uh, he's just been in the industry longer than me, so he he has some really good wisdom on it, and it's been a really valuable relationship for me. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean that's uh, it's nice to have those people in your life, a, a mentor and a friend, and yeah. uh, everything else. Yeah, and I think one of the things that I've like learned, and and not just with Sal, but like you know, various points in my career, if that's what you want to call what I'm doing, um, I've had different you know people on my team, publicists and producers, and that kind of thing. And what I've realized is like, and this is. I think it goes without saying, but, but it's hard to find in the music industry. Like bottom line is like, you need to have people who believe in what you're doing. Not just people who are like, I am capable of doing this skill and you are willing to pay me money. So I will do this thing for you, you know? Um, and I think Sal believes in it. I think he sees the vision that I have and I think he believes in it. And so he, he labors over these songs and he really puts, puts himself into them. Um, and really, really goes all in and, uh yeah it's, it's how the band is it's how my publicist is at this point and uh yeah just finding people who really believe in it and are willing to champion it and give it their all uh it makes such a big difference man yeah for sure yeah that's cool man that's uh, nice yeah. to hear <clears throat> we uh i wanted to tell you a story uh there's maybe a there's a new song or another song on this album uh called your town mm -hmm. and uh i don't know man it was uh kind of hit me like i didn't plan to uh really get as uh emotional about it i guess i don't know like it kind of it's kind of resonated um and then as you said uh your 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 co-write uh friend had a, a brain injury mm -hmm. and um kind of all uh came up to but like i lost my my mother in 2019 to uh to brain cancer mm. and uh and uh something about like listening to your town it like m made me think of her yeah and uh like just cruising around and like talking to her sometimes yeah. like even yeah. even though she's not here and so like i felt like yeah i don't know if that's any of what the song is written, I felt like it's more, uh, you know, but there's, it just kind of like, uh, resonated with me in that way. Like that. Yeah. These are, you know, what it's, what's going on in your town while you're not here. Yeah. So, well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, man. And I appreciate you saying that it resonated with you. Same crowds and gals still waving at the high school Their life still flickers on John Hampton Drive If you ain't in the stands by starting lineups It's still hard to get a seat on Friday night Still two for one past ten o'clock at Bobby that cover band still plays the same old set They still can't hit the high notes on low places But after all this time they still don't know it yet Nothing's changed, nothing's new But nothing's the same since it cut loose I know you gotta run like you always do 
guess what's going on in your town In your town without you About you, and to this day I don't know what to say. I took the long way home again this evening. Still somehow found myself down memory lane, and nothing's changed, and nothing's new, but nothing's the same since it cut through. I know you got a Yeah, it's interesting. You know, Jarrett Jarrett wrote that song with me too. Um, And the idea of it was really kind of a former love interest, right? Right. Like, uh, and I think about Eureka. When I go back home, I drive through Eureka. I think about people who I knew back then. And uh, I started college in Indianapolis at Butler University. And when I go back to Indianapolis, I usually go back for a basketball game a year. And being in Indianapolis is kind of the same kind of thing. It's like, I'm here and all these people who I knew back then are gone. They've moved out and mm-hmm. gone their different ways. And so it was kind of, it, 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 it's interesting you bring this up because it started as a love interest song, a, a, a you know, past love kind of thing. But when we got the tracks back, I sent them to Jarrett and he and I got talking and I was like, I am hearing this song differently for the first time since we wrote it. He was like, what do you mean? I was like, this song doesn't have to be about a love interest. I could I could show you the, the text messages of this conversation. Um, and he's like, he's like, what do you mean by that? I was like, this guy could be singing about somebody who's passed or he could be singing about himself. Mm-hmm. And I think about like my grandpa uh, passed away when I was 13 or 14. Uh, and he lived up in Kokomo, Indiana. And when I go back to Kokomo now, like my grandma's still there and my uncle's still there, but it's just a different town. Yeah. It just doesn't feel the same as it did. We used to go up there more often when my grandpa was around and we'd visit him and, and we'd visit them and I'd fish with him and play basketball with him and that kind of stuff. And Kokomo has not felt the same since he passed, you know? And I think it's just kind of a, a, a I think it's more universal than just a past love interest because I think everyone has that person who for some reason has come and gone out of their life. And man, when you lose somebody that important, whether they just are leaving or, or they've passed, um, the places and, and, and the, the memories that you have with them, they're just never the same again, you know? Um, so I, I appreciate that it resonated with you in that way. And I'm sorry to hear about your mom. Um, yeah. but I think that's, Thanks, I think it's part of, part of songwriting sometimes is, is every, everything's going to hit people a little bit different, you know, and people resonate for different reasons with, with various songs, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Just, <clears throat> it all kind of clicked for me like that. You know, again, just like kind of talking to her and giving her an update of what's, yeah. what's been going on. So yeah, like, yeah. I can. I mean, I could see obviously uh, that it was written about a, yeah. a past love, like you're saying. Yeah. But like, I, I I took it out as a different a different meaning. And yeah, so yeah. Um, but I think uh, I mean I, that's the the beauty of songwriting, man. I think it's yeah. cool that uh, you know people can have their open interpretation to some of these mm-hmm. lyrics and things and yeah and how it affects them and their their own personal story and yeah so yeah it's cool man yeah and that's i mean to me that's the goal of of songwriting is if you can impact even one person like there's 
Here's a song I put out a couple years ago, just like an acoustic thing on an acoustic EP I did called Breakdown. It was kind of about, you know, some stuff that I've struggled with in the past. Um, and I had two or three people reach out to me on Facebook after I released that um, about they were recovered or they were alcoholics and they were getting sober and they said like the songs really helped me like that's not my story like i'm i'm not an alcoholic i know a lot of people who who struggle with that um but that's not my story but that's how they were taking it and it was relating to them and it's it's just it can be a powerful thing and it's it's pretty humbling to hear stories like that you know where where somebody says like oh this song impacted me on this bigger scale than i even intended for it to when writing the song you know and i think that's that's part of what draws me to music, man. And that's part of why the songwriting is just so important to me is because you don't know how the songs are going to click with people, you know? Yeah. yeah, man. We mentioned, uh, like pushing, you know, to get cuts and by some of these different artists. Have you, you ever actively do any of that? Or are you just mainly focusing on your own stuff right now? Well, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a loaded question. Um, I moved to Nashville when I was 19. Um, in my when I went there, I thought I was just going to do that, just just write for other artists. That was kind of my thought. I had just found out about the songwriting world that we talked about earlier. Right. Um, I was like, that would be fun. I'm going to write songs for other people. And uh, I went to Nashville and I, I started writing. And, and and the reality is, I had no business being in Nashville when I moved there. Um, I was so green. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know anything about the industry. Uh, and it was like trying to drink from a fire hydrant, you know. <laughs> right. Um, and. But I guess what happened was, like, as I was, as I started writing, because that's kind of what I knew to do, was like, I'm just going to write and try to get better at this. And so I just wrote a ton. And as I started writing, I kind of started hearing this style. And I was like, I I like these songs. I kind of want to sing them, but I wasn't a very good singer. So I started taking voice lessons and kind of backed into the artist thing just because I liked the songs that I was writing. I wanted to be the one singing them. I knew I loved being on stage, you know. Um, So that's kind of how I got into the artist thing because the plan was to just write for other artists. Um, Where I sit today, I'm going to keep going on the artist thing. But I write so much that I have a lot of songs that I'll never cut. Um, And so, yeah, I would would love to to figure out how to get these songs in front of of other artists. Um, Truth is, like, I'm not entirely sure how to do that um, without a publishing deal, you Mm -hmm. know? I've had some publishing meetings and someday I hope to sign a publishing deal. But right now it's like, I don't have a clue how to even get them out there. So I'm just trying to build a name for myself and maybe they'll come knocking and asking for some songs at some point, you know? Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I have no idea either. I'm just, just curious. I mean, I think, yeah. um, like I say, and like, I, and <clears throat> even, uh, even some of these guys that are well established, still like co-write and or write songs mm-hmm. for other artists and things yeah. like, uh, you know, I know, uh, what was, uh, what was, uh, blinking on the name now, the song, what, uh, Miranda Lambert cut that one. I was like, uh, uh, you're, what it really sings yep. in when you see it in stone. What's the, what's the name of that? Uh, whatever. Man, I'm blanking on it. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but, uh, but anyway, they, Blake Shelton wrote the song and then Miranda sang it. So, um, I just Over thought, you? Yeah, over yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yep. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. Like, again, like if both of them are very well established right. in their careers, but you know, yeah. he, I guess he didn't feel right singing it. And yeah. So, uh, but yeah. Uh, so who knows, but I think it could be cool to get, you know, some, maybe some uh, other people want to start singing some of your songs too, just to, yeah, I would, you know, I, a long term that's, that's a hope is that some of these songs will. And maybe not songs from this album, but some of the songs I'm writing will get cut by other artists. And, yeah. You know, I've had some some independent artist friends cut some songs we've written together and stuff like that. It's been cool. But yeah, yeah, I would love to get in front of some of the, the major artists. I think some of that stuff would be fun, too, just to see how they interpret it. You know, mm-hmm. like, how, how you know, you, you have a, your idea and mm-hmm. then maybe they go to their producer and they twist it and yeah. You know, whatever, and just it comes up with something completely different than you. Like, yeah. you know, it's took, took on a whole new life. And, yeah, for sure. And I think that's the really cool thing. Like, you know, um, Chris Stapleton wrote Drink a Beer that Luke Bryan cut. And yeah. the song was obviously a smash. And to Luke Bryan, that song meant something different than to Chris Stapleton who wrote it. But it meant something important enough to Luke that he's like, this this is me. This yeah. is my song, you know, and, and it works. 
uh, and he tells his story. He just wasn't the one to write it. And I think it, that's, that's, I think, if I was going to summarize what we were just talking about a few minutes ago, I think that's what really makes great songwriting is when somebody else can sing it and it's still true to them. Mm-hmm. You know, like Drink a Beer was true to Luke Bryan, even though Chris wrote it. And, yeah. uh, and Luke, didn't, uh, Luke wasn't a writer on that song. Cause it's just the the writing is just so good and it's so uh, it's so universal. Anyone can relate to it, you know. Yeah. So <clears throat> maybe you know, I guess be even going back prior to move, making the move to Nashville uh, was the so writing was always like a big big part of it. Like, I mean, yeah. uh, were you was it always songwriting or did you get into like other creative writing and stuff? Of no, it was just songwriting. I mean, my best subject in school was like english yeah. uh which is shocking because my grammar these days i don't remember any of it honestly <laughs> right. I, and sometimes i write things i'm like this is horribly written but you know ri- like creative writing in school was something i was always pretty decent at but i never did it outside of school it was always songwriting um and i don't know i mean i mean i'm the, I'm the youngest of three kids and, and i'm really close to both my siblings um and we were always playing music together growing up and when they both were off at college is kind of when I got back into music and I had a lot of free time on my hands because it was my siblings that I spent most of my time with you know when they left it was like all right I guess I'll just do this and so I'd go downstairs and I'd pick around a guitar and cover other people's songs and Mm -hmm. it just kind of started writing when I was 16 or 17 and that's kind of when I I fell in love with it I was horrible at it um but I I love doing it you know so I went to college started up at in Indianapolis and it turns out Indianapolis has a pretty good music scene, but I didn't know that. Um, when I was there, you know, I was kind of confined to my campus and, um, I didn't, I was 19. I couldn't get into the bars and stuff. I didn't, I couldn't really go be a part of the music scene. So from my view, I was like the only one writing songs that I knew of there. And, um, it felt like I just, I was just so enthralled with it. I was like, I, kind of want to give this Nashville thing a try um which was a hard decision like I really loved Butler I loved being at that school and I loved the people there uh but I knew if I didn't go then I would never do it you know so I I transferred halfway through college to to go down and be in Nashville uh but yeah it was always it was just always a songwriting um I'm not a great guitarist I'm good enough to get through a song and and be a rhythm guitarist in my band uh, but it was never about being a musician or, or even an artist at first. It was just, I just wanted to write songs, you know, yeah, man. so it started. Yeah. So as far as, uh, Nashville at 19, do you, uh, is there any, any regrets to it? Or do you, are you thankful that you, uh, got to learn as much as you did at a young age and down there? And- That's a good question. Um, no regrets, no regrets about moving to Nashville, no regrets about moving home. Um, I regret a little bit, I guess, how I spent my time in Nashville. Uh, I think it's a town where if you're going to be there, you got to be there, you know, and you got to be all in and really immerse yourself in it. And the beauty of Nashville and and to be honest, I think this has changed a little bit. Uh, I still get to Nashville pretty often, uh, cause all my co-writers are there. Most of my co-writers are there. Um, but I think it was more of a community thing right. when I was there than it is today. I think it's changed a bit. I think COVID changed it. I think social media has changed it. I think industry, uh, you know, money drying up in the industry has changed it. When I was there, it felt like I heard someone use this analogy and I'm going to steal it from them because I think it's really good. When I lived there, it felt like we were all kind of playing in the same lake. Like we were all around the same lake, kind of playing in the same water, you know. In the last couple of years, my observation of it is... Um, it seems like it's dried up to like a bunch of little puddles and you kind of have your people around your puddle and it's really hard to cross over to another puddle, you know? So it's kind of, it's not clicky. I don't think intentionally, I think just people are protective of who they work with and they're protective of what they do. Um, and so it feels like just a bunch of little puddles and it's not, it doesn't feel like the community that it used to. And in my view, I, I could be wrong about that, but that's kind of my take on it. But when I was there, it was so community oriented, uh, and network, focused um and supportive it was really a supportive community and i wish i had immersed myself in it more um i think i was intimidated i think i was insecure 
And so a lot of my time was just spent in my apartment writing songs by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, probably just a little bit scared to put myself out there. And uh, I wish I'd put myself out there more and gone out to shows more and, and asked more people to write with me and, and really done the Nashville thing more, you know. So that's my only regret with it. But I don't regret being there and I don't regret moving home. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've always kind of looked at it that way, too, uh, as far as being the networking. I mean, like, obviously, you're surrounded by some of the world's best songwriters and, and players. And and it's just a great, you know, way to learn from a lot of different people. And Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, <clears throat> I feel like that a lot about St. Louis, kind of like you talk about the puddles. Mm-hmm. Uh, kinda, St. Louis has a lot of these little scenes around you know or pockets of music around town where Mm -hmm. we're we don't always all collaborate and working together to you know lift each other up everybody kind of a lot of you know people you know focusing on their own community maybe or however you want to look at it but i don't like i just feel like uh if we all work together we could we could really do some some crazy stuff but yeah uh, i don't know it's just uh it is kind of cool uh, on a personal note um i mean I, I don't i'm not trying to like pat myself on the back but there is like uh it is cool to see like when i have friends like that you know have my t-shirt or something like that mm-hmm. and they'll wear it around i'm like oh shit you know shane and like yeah and those kind of things so at least there's like there is some ser- sort of a common thread through a lot of yeah. like, a lot of people like and i'm in uh, lo- I also try to do it with my songwriter showcase, introducing a lot of like different artists to each other in hopes that they would, you know, either do some shows or co write or yeah. anything, you know, just, but I'm trying to, you know, bridge some of those gaps myself, yeah. you know, trying to make it seem like it, we, we are all working at this together. Yeah. And I think that that's really cool. And I, I so appreciate what you're doing with that because it is in a city like St. Louis, there's so much talent, but I think you're right. And I don't like, I'm not trying to take anything away from St. Louis. Like, I love being here and I'm glad to be here. I would argue, like, Nashville has a music scene, right? It doesn't feel like St. Louis quite has a scene yet. It has a lot of those little puddles where the really great things are happening. And it's like the scene, you know, air quotes around scene really happens, I think, when all that stuff kind of comes together. And I am seeing that more and more in the last year or two. People are starting to kind of get to know each other and kind of mesh their worlds together right and i think you're what you're doing is a big part of that and um <coughs> but i think that's like <clears throat> what st louis needs is is that kind of uh thing to just unite it all just mm-hmm. to bring it all together because there's so much talent here man and i've oh, been yeah. so encouraged by that in the last couple of years uh and it's really exciting to be in it you know and it's just like man we just gotta bring it all together it'll be a great thing you know yeah yeah i agree i think uh we definitely uh, the the talents there is just a couple of missing pieces, and yeah. I think we'll we'll be right up there with uh, with a Nashville or an Austin or yeah. any other great music cities yeah. and stuff. So, well, the thing is, like, there's a I think this is the time for it because since COVID and since prices just keep going up in Nashville and Austin, people are leaving, man. Like, right? I mean, that's I mean that's been said for a long time. St. Louis is definitely why I think so many artists do stay here uh, because it is a affordable living yeah. and you are a couple you know hour drive to nashville or whatever and yeah like you know it's easy to tour out of yep and stuff so yeah it's not it's not a bad st louis is a really good location it's close to a lot of cities it's yeah. driving distance to a lot of good cities to go play <clears> shows <throat> in or do industry stuff in nashville right uh but it's more for significantly more affordable than nashville right um and yeah i think that i don't know i think i think it could be a little hub here uh in the next five years if we if we foster right you know yeah i feel like we had like when when you mentioned nelly or you know i feel like when he hit like I, there was a lot of people looking at st louis for for talent mm-hmm. <clears throat> um and we got your, your jayquan yeah. you know and got, got he he had a a couple of different you know guys in in the hip-hop kind of got uh yeah. their chance to shine and stuff but as far as like you know that didn't stick around very long i don't feel like we had like the continued uh you know uh keeping and keep focused on st louis as a as a music and stuff and like but i feel like there's obviously people are doing it you know and at a high level but i'm saying as far as like developing talent in the city like it i feel like we if we had some sort of that infrastructure and stuff like to help 
you know, um, kind of hone some of this talent and stuff and get people out yeah. on, the, on the radio more and everything else. I mean, I know I've, a lot of people look at radio as dying, but it still is a great way to make an artist uh, yeah. known around the country. So, yeah, I think that, um, I think like the industry side of St. Louis just isn't there yet. I think it'll happen. Yeah. Um, and I think that, I don't know, there's some kind of culture thing too where like, I don't know, maybe your your other guests don't get this or feel this way, but I feel like sometimes the mentality, at least in what I do, I get called country and so people, you know, think about Nashville and they hear my stuff and um, I think there's a kind of this mentality of like, well, if you were serious about this, you'd go to Nashville. And it's like, I don't know, I'm pretty pretty damn serious about it <laughs> yeah. and there's a reason i moved home you know sure. like there's a reason i'm not in nashville um yeah. so yeah i think the culture and the industry just need to kind of catch up the fans are great yeah but there's still kind of this underlying culture of like yeah if you were serious you'd be elsewhere you know and i don't i don't see it that way at all i probably did when i first moved home and, and mm-hmm. I, i've completely changed on that i feel like this is the right town to be in you know yeah i mean i i think uh again there's pros and cons to any of it yeah. uh, i think there's good networking and stuff to be had in in nashville but i don't think that's like the the cure-all thing i mean i think you yeah. can make it anywhere and you know it's like if, if you uh put in the work so yeah it doesn't matter what where you're where you're located at so yeah right um all right let's uh let's close this thing out with a uh this is the last track on the album and this is called cashing out mm-hmm. and uh what uh what would you like to share around cashing out yeah this was um the it's one of my favorites on the album uh just because it's really personal i um we had finalized the track list for the album and it was 10 songs and it was not on fire up through heart of the heartland which was song number 10 and we were done and um that was like february we kind of decided that the we had the songs done you know then I went up to play a um, up to Chicago in early March to play a private party, um, you know, traveling alone and stuff. And you know, I've been on the road a lot this year, going to Nashville to record and write, traveling around playing shows. And, and a lot of the time when I'm on the road, my band's with me. And um, I say goodbye to my wife and kids, and it's always hard to say goodbye to them. Usually the band's with me and I can get over it. You know, those are those guys have become some of my best friends and um once we're on the road I'm I'm good, you know. But I went up to do this private show in Chicago in March and it was freezing cold up there in March is most of the year, I guess. And uh just I don't know, like the loneliness, traveling alone without the band, without my family, mixed with the the cold of Chicago is just like I don't know. It made me kind of just crave a season of being off the road and being home with my people. Um, and so I came up with that idea for like, you know, the, the hook of that song was like, save my seat at the table. I'll be back around. It ain't goodbye forever, but for now I'm cashing out. And it was just kind of like, I just wanted to break, you know, and I, I got that break this fall. I've had some, some time off now to be with my people and now I'm ready to get back on the road. But at the time it was just like, I just need to be home for a little bit, you know? And, yeah. So I came up with that idea on, on the way back from Chicago and I wrote it all by myself that night up till two in the morning, just finishing that song. Cause you know, sometimes it just hits you that way. You know, sometimes songs you'll labor over for months and sometimes it just kind of fall out. That one fell out pretty quick. Um, so it's, it's a special song to me. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad it, I'm glad it made the album. Yeah. 
chips in hand It ain't worth a killing But it's sure worth a damn Leave my seat at the table I'll be back around It ain't goodbye forever But for now I'm cashing out I think it's uh good to go along with the uh the gamble you know yeah. cashing out it's all, yeah all, all, all yeah like, and that wasn't even like intentional to to play them into each other that yeah. way but it, it ended up working really well that the the last song on the gamble album is yeah. is cashing out yeah. right yeah it worked yeah man uh well again uh you'll be, you'll be able to hear this everywhere um you're all your digital platforms so be sure to follow along with matt jordan on your uh facebook and instagram mm-hmm. and uh but matt jordan music.com matt jordan songwriter oh, songwriter yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry about that yeah, uh yeah so check that out and uh come out to the album release party on november 12th at kirkwood performing arts center and pick up uh, one of those cds and get you that's some right. some bonus tracks yeah, too. that's right uh well, i got a couple of questions uh, we'll close yeah. this thing out with is your uh kind of a little more uh, goofy and uh, get your take on some of these. Uh, but, uh, all right, we've got a Matt Jordan action figure coming out. Uh, what would you like to see as your, your three accessories to go with your, your action figure? Oh, that's a good question. I've never been asked that question okay. before. Uh, let's see. I think guitar is obvious. Yeah. Um, I want to say like a, they don't have to be things I hold, right? Just like some kind of accessory. Yeah, they can be whatever. Yeah. I want to say like a fire pit. Yeah, I like I do a lot of my riding sitting by a fire pit. Um, we hang out by a fire every Monday after band practice. Uh, it's like kind of our our thing. So a little little campfire or something. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeep Wrangler. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Product placement. That's right. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah. I think that uh, that'd be fun. Uh, all right. Uh, if you could see a um fictional band live what do you think that might be what what would be a band you always wish you could see live like anybody ever well uh, fictionally like from tv or movies or something like that like a fictional band oh uh, man that's a good question because there's a lot i mean like i don't know it's something you probably don't really think a lot about but there's oh hang on what was that one movie <laughs> eddie hang on i can't remember what it's called but these guys were eddie and the cruisers oh yeah yeah that soundtrack, dude, that's like Bruce Springsteen. Oh, for sure. It's yeah. so good. I want to see it in the cruisers. There it is. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, those are, uh, those are, I mean, those are great songs. Uh, great songs. Yeah. That's some of the best American rock that's ever been made. Yeah. And it was for a movie. Yeah. It's so good. 
Yeah, that would be uh that'd be a good one for sure. Um all right. So what about a uh a dream dinner? Say you uh this so this one came about like um I was listening to Stern show and he had uh Dave Grohl on and Dave was telling a story about having Taylor Swift over and Paul McCartney over and they were like jamming, playing piano and eating pizza. And I'm just like, what the, you know, what kind of, this is weird. This is like that you all, you all hanging out and like, <laughs> yeah, and like, so anyway, is there uh if you, you know, past or present or, you know, living or not living, uh, is there, you could have a dream dinner with some people who, who do you think might maybe like three or four people you might want to have over that, that night? Hmm. I'm going to say Tom Petty and Bruce Springsteen for sure. Um, I read, this is an aside, but I read uh, one of their biographies. I don't remember which one, but they talked about how I think Tom was going through a divorce and he was just, you know, struggling with it. And uh, he called Bruce one day there out in California. He was like, hey, man, you want to go for a drive? And Bruce Springsteen and Tom Petty got in the convertible and drove up the Pacific Coast Highway listening to music and talking. And I was like, I want to be in the backseat of that yeah, car you know? yeah. so i'm gonna have those two over uh well, that's a, that's a lot of what i think about as a dinner just like yeah it's not even like to interview just the hangout like this just like, the hangout, know, yeah, yeah. it's like you get these guys to just be people and tell stories and have fun yeah. have a great night laughing and i'm gonna bring those two and then i'm gonna bring eric church and his kind of go-to co-writer casey bethard yeah. um i know those are kind of different worlds but those are some of my heroes from a songwriting and artistry standpoint and i just yeah. want to hear their stories yeah man that'd be a good night yeah yeah that car ride would be that would be a fun night for sure just cruising with those guys i was like a little kid reading that man he was talking about driving pacific coast highway with bruce springsteen i was like dang yeah (laughs) that'd be fun oh yeah uh all right what about uh the day comes along we get the matt jordan biopic who would you like to see cast to play you in the in the movie version Hmm. you ever get you look like somebody or I used to, before I uh, had kids and gained my dad weight, I used to hear <laughs> that I look like Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Um, I don't know. I'm pretty bad on like a younger actor, so I'm going to have to go with somebody older. Uh, I was always a fan of Edward Norton. Yeah. I don't think I look like him, but I like I like his acting, so I'm going to say Edward yeah. Norton. He's one of the greats, man. He's great, yeah. 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 Um, and Joseph Gordon-Levitt, too. They're both, they're both yeah, uh, incredible. They're both great. They're great both at what great. they do, yeah, but yeah, yeah, that would be a... That'd be fun. And so maybe if Edward Norton's busy, we'll get Joseph to do it. And yeah, that's that's an okay uh, <laughs> second option. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, and then maybe this kind of goes along. I, I feel like we may have already answered it, but <clears throat> along with all that, uh, what about a dream duet or collaboration? Who I'm sure are like a lot of the same guys that you would love to work with. Yeah, but I've already used them, so I'm going to do a different all one. All right. Um, you listen to Morgan Wade at all? Oh yeah, yeah. I would love to do a song with Morgan Wade yeah. someday. She's a badass. She's so good. Yeah. Uh, Kip Moore just did a duet with her, and yeah. Kip's one. Of, I love Kip Moore, and their voices were so good together. But man, Morgan Wade when she released Wilder Days, that I that song floored me more than a song has in recent history. Yeah. By far, like it was. It was. And I've been. I've been a fan of everything since. Um, and she has such a cool voice and she's just really good at what she does and she seems like a cool chick. I'd yeah. love to sing a song with her someday. So I got to see her a couple times, like pretty, pretty close. She was hitting St. Louis uh, every couple months for a while. Yeah, there. she did like, for like last year, I think. Yeah. She came like, three or four times, I think. Um, she was jumping on a couple different tours yeah. and they don't like, but one of them being, uh, she opened from American Aquarium at Del Mar Hall. Yeah. And, <clears throat> And she came out just her solo acoustic. And I mean, you've been to enough shows. There's a lot of times the opener, nobody really gives a shit. Like yeah. They're talking, drinking yeah. beers and whatever. Uh, they came out. I think a majority of the people there were there to see her. Really? I think so. I mean, like, cause people, people <coughs> were like silent and like, yeah. and like dialed into what she was doing. She had that room in the palm of her hand and like, and it was just beautiful, man. Like, just like, like uh, there was some really cool moments where you know just and I then I saw, I saw her a couple months later with the band and like I I go I can I go back and forth I'm like I prefer that night with just her and a yeah. guitar like that was like there's yeah. something really you know really special about just 
you know, that, yeah, the simplicity of that moment and stuff. So, yeah, I think sometimes when I think Morgan is a great writer and I think, um, she carries this, like, you just believe and hang on to every word she says. And I think when they're, when you find someone that's that good at that thing, sometimes it's better to just have them on their own, Yeah, you know, cause you can just, you just feel it more. It's just raw and real. And like her voice is so compelling and real. Uh, I would imagine her acoustic would just be. Yeah, it was a cool night, man. Be great, yeah. But I was just like, again, I was, I was, I'm, I was so thankful that everybody was on the same page as me because, like, that's the way it drives me nuts, man. When I go to shows and people are talking the whole yeah. time and stuff, and I'm yeah. like, hey, you might not care, but this is why I'm here. Right. I came here to see her. Right. right. I mean, I like American Aquarium too, but yeah. I came here to see you know Morgan. And, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, those are always the best shows, man. Yeah. When, when you can hear a pin drop. Right. You know, you know, they're doing something right. Yeah. Know? It's cool. Yeah. It was a good night. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, let's make that happen. Let's, uh, let's, uh, see if we can can't get, uh, I'm going to do what I can, yeah. man. She's, <laughs> she's so good. Uh, all right. What about, um, a song you wish you wrote? Is there a, is there one that <clears throat> maybe, um, you know, just feel like tells your story or, sp- speaks to you in a certain way you're like damn i wish this was on my album or oh man there's a lot yeah. um to get a new name in there again have you ever heard of travis meadows yeah okay yeah he is he's a great writer has cuts with dirk bentley and eric church and right. kenny chesney all these guys but he has solo work too and he has a pretty crazy story um and he's one of those guys who you just hang on to every word he says and he has a song on his most recent album called sideways and it's just good line after good line yeah uh and i wish i wrote that song and if y'all listening don't know travis meadows go look him up because he is he's special talent yeah yeah man that'd be uh i feel like that about uh uh john morland oh uh, yeah he like I, I, I mean i consider him one of the greats but like as far as songwriting, but like he's not like a, he's not like a storyteller. But like it's just like line after line, you're like, damn, what is that? you know? It's poetry. Yeah, dude. it's just like yeah, you know, they don't always like. It's not like always a in a, um like in a complete idea as far you know again like yeah. telling a story beginning to end kind of thing in, a, in three minutes. But like I listen to his lines and I'm like, geez, like they're just like you know. Where does he come up with these, these lines yeah. like that and stuff? And yeah, he John Moreland has a song called "Your Spell" that is so good. Yeah, it's like uh, what is the line? Like uh, remember those prom kings and queens praised from afar? They look pretty ordinary. Uh, twenty eight years old, checking out at Walmart with the babies in their arms. And it's like, yeah, dude, it's just like such a real picture of like all these superstar high school kids, the cool kids from high school. It's yeah. Like, they're just normal people, you know, and like he just the way he writes that idea, right? So poetically, he's he's great. I like uh, there's uh, blues and kudzu, mm-hmm. uh, and he says there's uh, always a line that sticks with me. He says like a a, a choir, cicadas, and box fans, and I'm like, yeah. damn, that is like the most country shit I've ever heard. <laughs> like, just a picture, man. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, and like sometimes you get lines that are just so real where you're like. You just live that. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. that's so straight, so on the nose. It's just real. It's it's beautiful how he writes, man. He's yeah. he's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, I got to, uh, I saw, I got, I mean, I've been, like, following his career, like, as he's really, like, kind of started taking off in the last couple of years, but I got to see him at Gramophone, of all places. Uh, no kidding. Before Gramophone was a sandwich shop. Yeah. It, was, it was a music venue. Yeah. And uh, I saw him in there with, like, eight people. And, uh. I was like having the time of my life, like, yeah. but I'm like, where the hell is everybody? I mean, this guy's incredible. He's and then, so good. And then, of course, uh, I think it was like next later that summer or something, whatever. He jumped on tour with Jason Isbell and yeah. you know the game changer for him. So put, yeah. him, put him out in front of the people that need to hear it. And yeah, yeah, I think I found him through like a, an American songwriter article, and they called him a songwriter songwriter. Yeah, it was like the guys who were writing songs are inspired by this guy. Yeah. I was like, I need to check him out. And I started listening. I was like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> he's a songwriter, songwriter, yeah. dude. He's great. I saw him open up for uh, Ben Nichols also, uh, oh, yeah? uh, Lucero. Yeah. And dude, Lucero uh, was great. And Ben Nichols is like just a super fan. And he's like, so, of course, uh, John opened. Ben Ben came on after him and did his set. And both of them are just playing solo acoustic stuff. And then uh, and then John, uh, then John Ben's like, 
look at John back out here. Like, yeah. like he did the encore and I'm like, how, how, uh, you know, rare is that? The, the, the headliner that like, gives the encore to the, the, the opener. opener. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like it don't, that don't ever happen, but it was a cool That's moment. Cool. And like, I remember, uh, was that off Broadway still had the bar inside of the, years ago and like and and Ben's just like leaning up against the bar or watching his set just like smiling yeah. like you know like arms crossed and just yeah. eating it up man he was like and that's like gotta be one of the coolest things like especially somebody like that that you're a fan of and appreciate and become friends with like that you can just watch them do their thing in front yeah. of a crowd every night and yeah and watch people fall in love with them and stuff so yeah yeah that's really cool yeah but uh yeah man well we've, we've dropped a lot of names in here so if you don't know these people please go check them out and uh see why we yeah we appreciate them so it's much it's all good stuff yeah yeah uh but uh again grab your tickets join us at uh kirkwood performing arts center november 12th and celebrate the gamble and uh but man this has been uh super cool man i'm really glad we uh made this happen thanks for spending some time with me today and yeah man thanks for having me this was a lot of fun and uh hopefully uh Hopefully we can do it again soon sometime. Yeah, absolutely. So. I got a lot of music coming next year. So we'll yeah. do it again when I start putting more stuff out. Very cool. Yeah, man. All right. Well, thanks, buddy. Thank and, you. Uh, bye, everyone.